Okay, so for the first um, 400 millimeters, you've got to be really careful. Like, you don't go and try and smash that hole down because um, what I find is probably on 2% of the jobs that we do, there's a pipe about 400 down. Uh, you can be, you can take real precaution, you can get plans, you can check, um, but you never know because that pipe might have been put there before and the person doesn't know or there's no, they're not on the plans. So you have to be careful. Um, you, I'm just pushing it down about 50 mil rather than trying to smash it down like 100 to 150 mil. Like it's really soft now, I'll go to the depth of the post hole diggers. But for this first bit, I just want to ease it out and uh, do it really gently and just keep digging around. Make sure there's no pipes. Places to be really careful. If there's a pool around, there's going to be pipes somewhere. Um, uh, along the boundaries of fences and stuff, um, the rules from the council say 900 in from the boundary. Uh, if you're 900 in, then you're um, then you're safe. Usually there's, but you know you can have electrical pipes running. So you look on the buildings and you look to see where electrical pipes, little conduits are coming down. Uh, taps, where, like the taps, your garden taps, look for where they are, work out where they're going to run to, whether it's to the street or to the back of the property or the side of the property, and try and guess where they are, and then just be extra careful as you're digging. But anyway, like this, a little bit at a time. Once you're down that half a metre, you don't usually find anything else. But again, you still have to use caution. I have found... Um, uh, sewer lines and uh, they're down really deep they're normally down 1.8 meters but I've found them as shallow as 900 um, but normally they're made out of terracotta they're a bit more a bit uh, tougher they're not going to break but the plastic ones are you know you, you hit those too hard you're gonna break something they're easy to repair pipes are easy to repair um, gas lines they're not easy to repair you need a plumber out to get those um, uh, stormwater, stormwater ones, they, you know, they you just need to make sure the water can flow on them. So if you break those, you usually got to take the section out and replace it back again, and the water can flow down through that. And uh, PVC pipes, usually you just crack them, and uh, you can just get another pipe and stick it in there, or you can um, get another piece of PVC and silicon all the way around and stick it over the pipe. Make sure that it's all sealed off nice and tight and screw it in with some hex bits, uh, some tech screws, and uh, that should hold it together and just keep going, you know. And then you've got to either move your post hole over, um, move your post hole over, or take a different slant, you know. Not, it just depends on what you're dealing with, and you, someone has to make a decision on, on what you're going to do when you, when you find a pipe on the ground. Hope you, hopefully, you don't, you're not that 2%. A crowbar digger is being used to get out the rock and the hard pieces in the ground. We're about 850 now, 900. This is an actual easy hole to dig. It's not, yeah, in comparison to other types of holes, this, um, the beauty about this hole is that the clay's coming out, the clay, it is a clay, and it's not too wet, so it doesn't stick to the post hole diggers. If you get really wet stuff, it sticks to the post hole diggers and you have to kick it all off. And, um, and that, that, that can triple the time it takes to dig a hole. This one, you can see, he's able to pick it up in large clumps, and, uh, and then as he's pulling it out, it's just falling off the blades when he opens them up. So. He's dug this in like less than 20 minutes, half an hour. If, um, if this was a, a thick, wet clay hole, um, he'd be there for an hour doing the same depth. Uh, if it's sand, it takes five minutes to dig the hole. I think the record for digging a sand hole is about 10 minutes. So it just depends on what you hit. If you hit a rock, you have to core hole drill it. So if it's a big rock, if it's uh, maybe a rock about 
foot like that big, you'll just be able to smash it out with a crowbar. It's a bit of muscle. Um, I don't think a lady could do it easily, but any, any man uh, could could smash it out pretty reasonably easy. Anyway, this size post hole is digging for 100 by 100 posts, and um, you know the the bigger the taller of your post, the deeper your hole has to be. Um, a good rule of thumb is about a third. So if you're going three meters up, you might want to go one and a half down. That would be pretty good. You've got to kind of ignore the first few hundred millimeters of uh, ground because that's usually soft and a bit and, and, and able to move. It's the stuff that's down below that first few hundred that's hard for that, that last meter. If you're going into sand, you've got to dig it even deeper. If you're into rock, you can do it really shallow. If you concrete a post into rock, like if you drill into the rock and then you concrete it, you know, maybe a sixth of the post is enough, like, you know, 400 or five, 500 into rock could hold a, you know, four meter post in the air. So, hey, me, as long as the rock's big. I think yeah. there's a bit of base here. A base, what do we got? Is it concrete? Um, Let's just measure the depth of that hole. It's about, I think about 950. Yep. Well, which wall are you measuring it from? Uh, here. Okay. It's 900. 900. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, just back out and let me have a quick smash and see if I can... So, sometimes you hit concrete slabs, sometimes there's, uh, just hard clay. That's extremely hard, whatever it is. And it looks like... Is it the base of the house, maybe? No, this is, this is bedrock. This is what you call bedrock. So, like we're in, what suburb we're in? Heathcote. Heathcote's down in the Southern Shire area. It's got a lot of rock. Uh, you know, the houses are built on rocks. So, we've gone down 900 into the ground, and we've hit the bedrock. So, this rock might be 50 metres long. We don't know how, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be a big rock. It's good. It's good because we're down 900, that's enough concrete to hold this post in the ground where it's not going to move. And because it's got a rock bottom, it's not going to tilt, the post isn't going to tilt. So, we're just going to call that a hole that we've dug and we're going to put a post in there and uh, be satisfied. Mokadro is just going to make it a bit, it's going to make it a bit wider all the way around. And that's to compensate because we're not going down so deep. Because originally we are going to take this down 1.2, 1.4 metres. And um, instead, what we're going to do is just make the hole a bit bigger. Yeah. And you see, he's doing that really easily with the with the crowbar. And then, um, and then he's going to dig it out with the post hole diggers. You don't need to go deep in the wall there. No. Just um, it's straight like right down. Te uh, tendency when you're digging with post hole diggers is that the post hole starts to the the depth of the hole starts to go in a cone shape. You don't want that, because then at the bottom of the hole, you, you've only got a tiny bit of concrete, and the top of the hole, you've got a big bit of concrete. You have to dig them parallel all the way down. So, so you've got this big block of concrete, so it's the weight of that concrete against the sides of the wall, which makes it so that the post can't be pulled over at the top. You've got, if you stick a kick, cricket post, a cricket stump into the ground, um, you know it's very easy to come over and knock it over from the top. But if you stick it down really deep, you can't do that. And the harder the ground, and the deeper you go down, harder into the ground, it can become like a, you know, a steel column where you can't even knock the thing over, which is what we're, what we're doing. Because we're going to hang a shade sail up here. We're going to have a, a shade sail pulled, tension tight at the top of the post. And the, uh, the sail, twice a year, is going to have a big storm. In Sydney, you get probably about twice a year, you get a big storm, lots of rain, lots of wind. Um, not cyclonic, but you know, could be up to 80, 80 kilometers an hour, 90 kilometers an hour. It's quite a lot. It's not 120, but it's, um, you know, regular occurrence would be 60 kilometer hour winds twice a year. And uh, your shade sail is going to be flapping like this uh, and pulling on the top of that post. So uh, even though the shade sail's tension, it's not going to move very much, but it's it's a lot on that top of that post. So that's why we big footing, deep holes. Thick steel columns, five mil thick walls, not not 2.3. That's too thin. You'll just bend your post. Your post will break. Um, see a lot of uh, 
people in the lower socioeconomical areas that put in a very thin post with the light wall. I give it about a year before the whole thing's gone boof and fallen over. Anyway. It's going good here. Thank you.